The new 14 inch MacBook Pro is fantastic, but it cost a thousand dollars more than the 2020 M1 MacBook Air, which actually was my favorite computer in the last 12 months. There are only a handful of reasons why the new MacBook Pro is worth a thousand dollars over the MacBook Air. So unless they don't apply to you, you should consider saving your thousand dollars. Spoiler, the biggest reason is gonna be performance. Right now, both laptops are rendering a 4K H.264 five minute project and 4K ProRes at the same time. So we'll come back to these results once they're finished just to show you how much faster the M1 Pro is, but let's first do a rapid fire of the technical differences. The new MacBook Pro is boxy, heavier, and slightly larger at 14 inches, while the MacBook Air is slimmer, more portable, and has a rounded body. You only get two Thunderbolt 3 ports and a headphone jack on the Air, while on the Pro model, on the left side, you get MagSafe charging, two Thunderbolt 4 ports, and a high impedance headphone jack, and on the right side, you get an SD card reader, HDMI, and a third Thunderbolt 4 port on the right. If you do any kind of presentations often, having that HDMI port there is gonna be extremely useful. And if you are a photo or video professional, having that SD card reader and an extra Thunderbolt 4 port will prove to be a lifesaver for your workflow. However, something to consider is that you can pick up a USB-C dongle that includes the same ports for a relatively low price on the air if you really do need that access to connectivity. Okay, so the 14 inch MacBook Pro finished that export time in one minute and eight seconds. The MacBook Air is still rendering that video, so we'll come back to it once it's finished. Another big reason to consider paying $1,000 more for the new MacBook Pro has to do with the display. The M1 MacBook Air sports a 2560 by 1600 retina display with P3 color and True Tone. Therefore, colors on the screen are accurate, the text is sharp, and the overall display actually looks quite good. For most people, I think you're actually gonna be quite happy with already how good the MacBook Air display looks, but the 14 inch MacBook Pro takes it even a step further with its brand new Liquid Retina XDR display. It will be very hard to see the differences over a YouTube video, so you're gonna have to take my word on this. The display technology in this laptop is in impressive to say the least. It's an HDR display that supports extreme dynamic range with a million to one contrast ratio. It has 10,000 mini LEDs to give you incredible detail in any form of content that you are watching. And to top it off, it supports ProMotion. The display has an adaptive refresh rate up to 120 Hertz, so this laptop feels incredibly smooth when scrolling through web pages or having your gaming session feel very responsive to the touch. And spoiler, we're gonna touch on gaming later in this video, so definitely stay tuned for that. But if all of this display technology stuff just went way over your head, this difference probably doesn't apply to you. I'd say the display improvements are only worthwhile for people who are working with photo and video all the time, or for people who just want to have the best image possible when watching Netflix, Disney Plus, or other streaming services on their laptop. Okay, so the results are in for the MacBook Air. The MacBook Air finished that export time at exactly two minutes. So the 14 inch MacBook Pro with the M1 Pro chip almost doubled the performance. And that's just showing you just how much more capable these chips are thanks to their built-in ProRes encoders and decoders to improve your export times. Okay, so there are more amazing things that I wanna share about the performance differences and, spoiler, similarities, because these laptops are actually quite similar in performance, more than you think. Before we get to that, I wanna still talk about other key differentiators between these laptops. Number one being the keyboard. Both computers sport Apple's Magic Keyboard with Touch ID verification, but the new MacBook Pro's keyboard is all blacked out and the function key row at the top is full-sized, where the Air's function keys are a little bit more petite. Both keyboards are comfortable, but the MacBook Pro keyboard feels nicer to type on, if I'm being frank with you. The pressing of each key is quieter and more fluid on the Pro, whereas on the MacBook Air, you can actually hear the difference when you type and the feeling of it just isn't as good in my opinion. The next difference is the speakers and trust me here, you can really hear the difference.
The new MacBook Pro sports a six speaker system with 80% more bass and a set of high performance tweeters for clearer, fuller vocals. To take this even a step further, this speaker system supports spatial audio when playing music or Dolby Atmos when playing video, giving you this three-dimensional soundstage that just was not possible on the MacBook Air. But that's not to say that the MacBook Air speakers suck. They're actually quite good in my opinion and one of my favorite speakers in any laptop out today. But when you put it side by side with the MacBook Pro, you can definitely hear just how much weaker this whole system is compared to the new MacBook that Apple released. And this is a webcam test between both of these laptops and first impressions here, the MacBook Pro has more true to life colors. There's a little bit less noise compared to the Air, but to me, it's not a very big difference, I don't think, but I think the microphones on the Pro should sound better than the microphones on the Air. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. In terms of battery life, however, this is where things get very interesting. The MacBook Air is actually the king here and not the MacBook Pro. According to the official numbers, you get up to 15 hours of web browsing over the 11 hours on the MacBook Pro and up to 18 hours of video playback versus the 17 hours in the MacBook Pro. So if you're constantly on the go, battery life performance is actually a huge deal you cannot get any work done with a dead laptop. One last point I do wanna make though, is that if you are somebody that's bad at charging laptops, only the new 14 inch MacBook Pro in this comparison can fast charge from zero to 50% in about 30 minutes. I do wanna note, you have to buy the upgraded 96 watt power adapter from Apple for an extra $20 but there you go, that's something that you cannot do on the MacBook Air. Now, we're at the most exciting part of the video, which is comparing the M1 chip in the MacBook Air versus the M1 Pro chip in the new 14-inch MacBook Pro. Starting off with the Geekbench 5 benchmark for the CPU, you can see there is equivalent single-core performance between these laptops, which makes sense because the M1 Pro chip is built on the same architecture of the M1 in the MacBook Air. However, the big gain this year is in the multi-core performance, coming in at almost 30 more percent power in the new MacBook Pro over last year's chip in the MacBook Air. When looking at the GPU benchmarks, this is where things start to look pretty crazy. The M1 Pro chip has almost 100% or two times more GPU capabilities than last year's M1 chip. So if you do any kind of graphics intensive professional work or even want a game on your MacBook, you're definitely gonna notice the difference this year on the brand new Pro Machine. Another big change this year is actually gonna be the SSD performance of these laptops. The 14 inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro was clocking double the write speed and almost double the read speed over last year's M1 MacBook Air. I used to think that the MacBook Air SSDs were fast. I mean, they are still fast, but the new SSD hard drives and the new MacBook Pros, those things are something special. A quick note, if you guys wanna make sure that your MacBook, no matter what one you have, is running as fast as possible, I recommend you download channel sponsor Clean My Mac X. I have it installed on all of my MacBook computers. It's an all-in-one cleaning tool designed to have your MacBook run as efficient as possible. And this is actually software that is approved by Apple. So if you guys are interested, I will leave a link in the description down below. I do wanna showcase one more Final Cut Pro export test to show you something very interesting, which is rendering a 4K video project in H.264 MP4 format instead of the ProRes format that we did earlier in this video. So the results are that the M1 Pro on the 14 inch came in at two minutes and 30 seconds, while the M1 MacBook Air came in at an astounding two minutes and 43 seconds. Interesting, right? The MacBook Air with only eight gigabytes of RAM in last year's M1 chip gave you comparable performance in terms of export times once you remove that ProRes encoder decoder advantage from the 14 inch MacBook Pro once we decided to export an MP4 instead. In terms of my real world experience, 
It's almost honestly not comparable. I, I really genuinely believe that being a video editor on the 14 inch MacBook Pro is a vastly better experience than being a video editor on the M1 MacBook Air. The 120 Hertz display is awesome. The mini LEDs really allow me to see and edit all the details in my footage. And I found I never had any drop frames or issues editing big projects on the new MacBook Pro, which isn't something that I could actually say the same about for the MacBook Air. And also the new MacBook Pro allows me to rock two external displays at the same time via HDMI and Thunderbolt. This is just awesome for a video editor like myself that can take advantage of this huge screen real estate when I am at home. And this is something that you just cannot do on the MacBook Air. Now, moving on to GPU performance, I actually thought it'd be interesting to test this out by doing a real world gaming simulation to test the difference here. I downloaded Rise of Tomb Raider on both laptops and at a mix of high and highest settings on the M1 Pro MacBook, at the highest resolution, you are able to get a very playable 30 to 50 frames per second throughout the entire game, which is very impressive. What's even cooler is just how great the display looks when running this game. Like, it's beautiful. And the speakers on this laptop are perfect for an immersive gaming session. It even runs great when pushing the game onto an external ultra-wide monitor, while still having another monitor in use as well. The same cannot be said about the MacBook Air. It's virtually unplayable on high settings, and you can only get a decent frame rate on much lower settings, and at that point, I don't think it's worth it. Just from this one test alone, you can definitely see how having double the amount of GPU cores on the M1 Pro chip can vastly make a huge difference in real world scenarios. Okay, so we've talked about a lot in this video, but the most important thing arguably is going to be our hard earned money and the pricing of these computers. The new MacBook Pros are very expensive, starting at $2,000 for the base model that I've been showing off during this video. Again, you get an M1 Pro chip with an eight core CPU and a 14 core GPU with 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigabytes of SSD storage. On the MacBook Air, you get an eight core CPU and a seven core GPU M1 chip with eight gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of SSD, starting at a very competitive price of $999. To be completely honest with you, I've worked with just the base model M1 MacBook Air for the better part of almost an entire year. And I was able to do all of my professional work that you guys see here on this channel. So if you are on a tight budget, I do want to give you the confidence that the M1 MacBook Air is still a very capable computer today. And this is especially true if you have a very CPU intensive workflow where actually you would not benefit from having all of those GPU cores in the M1 Pro chip. Something I do want to highlight, however, is that if we do bring the MacBook Air specs up, to make it equivalent to the MacBook Pro. So that's 16 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes of SSD storage. The MacBook Air is actually gonna cost $1,399. So that's a $600 difference now from the new MacBook Pro. So now when we look at this as a $600 difference, what you're getting is quite immense. You're getting hands down the best display on any laptop or desktop computer for that matter on the go vastly improved graphics performance, improved multi-core CPU performance, more ports if you are a professional, noticeably better speakers, and a better webcam and onboard mics. I think if you do have the money and your budget allows it, that difference of $600 is well worth the money in my opinion. However, as I've said, I've lived and used the M1 MacBook Air for almost an entire year and built my entire YouTube business upon it. I think I had like five or 7,000 subscribers at the time and look where I am now. Look at where my videos have taken me from that point. And that was thanks to that computer. So if you guys are just getting started and you only have $1,000 to buy a computer, I really don't think you'll be disappointed with the M1 MacBook Air. And it's still a recommendation that I can make in 2021. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Make sure to drop a like, comment down below, hashtag MacBook if you guys did finish the video, and let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Subscribe if you're brand new to my channel, but I'll catch all of you guys in the next video. Peace.